And good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Actually, to the four people watching, that's a lot more than I expected. And yes, this will be me rambling for the next hour or so. Let's hope. And uh, also, <laughs> the the comms are now voice uh, are now live. So be wary what you say, but remember we're on Twitch. Oh well, in that case, I just called Saldrum a very popular person. <laughs> no, what I want to say about that is... You didn't want to stream is... that, did you? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. What I want to say about that is that we're not on YouTube. But yeah. Um, when I started this, I had a coherent idea. I forgot it. <laughs> okay, I think That's what I'm going to start with is... um. You know what I usually say when I forget things? No. It wasn't important to begin with. Uh, I should have actually written down some notes. I have a few like plot points I want to talk about in my head, but I, if I just go through those, they will be a garbled mess. So, let's actually start. Um, Do it properly, self. Make a PowerPoint. Oh fuck! No, no, <laughs> now I've already started the stream. I'm not gonna do a PowerPoint now. Also, if you want me to make a PowerPoint, you need to piss me off for uh, several weeks in a row. Oh, I can do that. You know I can do that. No, you have dead I mean, him. You weren't the main reason. <laughs> I, mean, I wasn't trying to be, but I could. Just okay. because you can doesn't mean you should. So I'm gonna okay. I'm gonna I I have figured something out. Okay. So first of all, uh, I mean most people know this already, but I'm still gonna talk about it. There are 25 different 25, yes, 25 different airframes available to the players. They can be grouped in a couple of categories, going from gunboats up to battle cruisers. I would uh, I would say though that the freighters, um. But th that there's a few odd ones out that probably won't get used. Starting with the smallest, of course, gunboats, and there we meet three of them. Slip Falcon, Snow Basilisk, and the Whale Pony. It has been decided in the Death vs. Player matches that the Whale Pony is essentially a gunboat. Um, but it was also the... Um, if you look at the colors, you will see that the Mund Kraken is also technically a gunboat. But... Um, Oh, as the description actually states, it's too large to be a gunboat, but not large enough to be a corvette. <laughs> and that seamlessly brings us to the next one. The ones that are actually fun and actually buildable. Corvettes. Going over into light frigates, where we... And also there's the boarding corvette, but um, I'm not going to talk about a boarding corvette, because boarding isn't a thing in PvP. Then... We get the heavy frigates, which should frankly be some be called something else, which are the used to be the primary or, f or will probably still be the primary ship class for PvP. As anything smaller just can't p pack the bigger weaponry, and anything larger has a tendency to tremendously lag. Then we also have the defense frigate and the troop frigate. Both of those are fit a bit in the middle ground. They are not light frigates, but they are also not heavy frigates. Um, with Soren, we basically decided it's they are like medium frigates. They have potential, especially the troop frigate, if boarding was actually a thing. But boarding is not a thing, so it just has some decent-ish weaponry. Going further up than that, we have the cruisers. And of course, lastly, the battle cruisers. For the PvP tournament, I've specifically said that all ships are allowed. So all 25 airframes are allowed. But cruisers and battle cruisers, especially battle cruisers, are not recommended. Because when I run a battle cruiser, I get down to 30 FPS. When some other people run battle cruisers, they go down to 10. Or even less. So, absolutely not recommended for everyone. Okay. Let's actually start by making a 
gunboat. I'll bring up a gunboat and I will use this opportunity to talk about weapons. Actually no, not a gunboat. Let's take a heavy frigate, that's something I can actually show, talk about, design a bit more. So we're gonna take a stone dragon because stone dragons are awesome. So, when designing a ship... Oh, those don't exist yet. There's a, f there's a certain order I personally like to go through them. And the first thing for me is always weapons. You want to fill out every single weapon script you have available to you. And what weapons should one choose? I mean, there's a plethora of them. Ah, like 43 of them. So, what should one choose? There's a few things to consider. They, you can basically split the weapons into three different types. Kinetics, missiles, and torpedoes. Unless you want to be really brave, really bold, and really stupid, don't pick torpedoes. <laughs> First rule of thumb. Second. Um, missiles. Have potential. I've no, I actually have quite a lot of potential. If they hit. They tend to have the longest ranges of all of the weapons. Uh, normal weapons. Excluding stuff like the railgun. And they do a tremendous amount of damage. Problem is, they are intercepted by a point defense. And at the moment, there is one point defense weapon in the game that just completely shuts down everything. And, for example, on this ship, if I were to bring, let's say, three of them, per broadside, nothing can hit me in terms of uh, rockets. So rockets, also not recommended. Also with the nothing can hit me, fired from a ship of the same size. We're excluding battlecruisers here, battlecruisers can probably overpower that. So personally, I like to go for cannons. And the next... So, now that we've decided that we're gonna stick cannons on this, next big consideration and the next big thing is weapon range. It might seem not so important if you have one weapon that has 330 range, while another one has 310, that's only 20 difference, and this one does more damage. Or oh, the large steel cannon does more damage. But... Those 20 range can really fuck you up. Or more importantly, if someone brings something with even more range, you're gonna run into problems. So range, range is a very big consideration. And on the other hand, Teutonic howitzers are just fun. Generally speaking, you want to use the entirety of your weapons grid. And these 2 by 3 slots are just perfect for the howitzers. So I'm gonna stick them on here. Sadly, they cannot be faced backwards yet. That's just how it is. Then we come to these side, uh, leftover slots here. And I'm gonna do... just stick point defense there. Then... the rest of the other weapons. Yes, uh, a few days ago I actually did the Marfa ones. There has been the debate what weapon to use. Should you you either use oh there's my mines. Um the dual steel turret or should you use the iron cannon battery? Turns out they have the same DPS. So in that case you should take the dual steel turrets because they have more range. <laughs> you might be smelling you might be detecting a pattern here. Hypothetical viewer that isn't in this voice channel. <laughs> So I'm going to take a sip of my drink. So, what do we stick into these leftover spaces now? We could stick my point defense there. We could stick serpentines there, which are a weird hybrid of point defense, but also an offensive weapon. And they also sh pierce shields for some reason. 
So let's actually let's let's actually do that. Just two two kidney beam projectors should be sufficient to intercept most of the stuff or even all of the stuff. Also, remember to put components onto the other side as well. <laughs> and for the front here, um, generally speaking, from what I've experienced myself, for the, if your main firepower is on your broadside, you j you generally speaking don't want to use your forward-facing weapons if you even have any. Because by the time you get the ship turned around, um, when you have already, well, when you already engage with your forward-facing weaponry, it's too late to turn the ship around. Unless you're flying something like a corvette or a light frigate. With any of the bigger ships, you have to turn prematurely. Because otherwise, you just won't. So I'm just gonna do some small ST cannons there for just that little bit more cannon. So when I now have my weapon grid down, I do my drives next, and for the drives, it's actually rather simple. If the you can fit combustion drives on combustion drives onto the ship, do it. At the moment, they are the most efficient. They are, they, they are just the best. Speed thrusters give you more forward momentum. And the mana, large mana motor supposedly give, uh, actually yeah, it gives you more turning, even though I would strongly uh, recommend not using the large mana motor, because the additional turning you get from them is minuscule. Cheers, bye. Bye. Huh? Yeah, is minuscule and absolutely not worth sacrificing the more substantial amount of forward thrust you lose. So, for engines, just go for combustion drives. But, but Bori, I hear you say, those things can explode! Well, yes, yes, true, they can. But to be fair, by the time these drives get actually hit, you... It doesn't even matter that they explode anymore. You're basically dead already. <laughs> and the next thing is, um, when they explode, they deal 2,500 damage. Yeah, like that's that, like that's not even remotely close to destroying any of the components around here, so it's perfectly fine. For these uh, side slots on this specific ship, um, you could install mana motors if you have these one by two slots. Or if it's just one by one slots, um, or vertical one slot. Well, if you have the vertical slots, I would recommend putting speed thrusters there, because speed is important. But in this case, I'm gonna go with mana motors, and for the two exposed slots, armored mana drives. So, now that we have that, all of that in place, now it's time to consider shields. And for shields, um, when they were when the Death vs. Players event was happening, so the, like the very beginning of PvP, um, shields were a bit of an odd one out. There were a few players advocating for them, and a few players just absolutely hating on them. But now they have established themselves in the in the game, so or in the in the PvP scene. Now it's time to consider where to put them. <laughs> For this size of ship, you can probably take two, but what you have to consider is just having them on the ship draws already draws an extra 320 energy per second. And while they are recharging, they take another 200. So... Energy is the main limiting factor for shields. Also, generally speaking, you don't want to put them exposed. So, what you could do is have them here, for example. We're just gonna run with that, and now we're gonna try to power this. Once again, for the power, 
generally speaking, it's... Well, actually, if you want more energy storage, you should go for the medium minor dy dynamo. If you want more energy production, you should go for the combustion dynamo. And in this case, all of them, except the clean generator, explode. So it doesn't even matter. I don't actually think we can power this. Yeah, it's cutting it close. And now while putting down dynamos, always remember that on your green grid you also have to put your command structures. And for the command structures, it's basically gotten to the point we uh, we have no offices in PvP. So we just always pick workshops. Reason being, they give you a repair team and they give you energy. And they're one by one. So they give you all kinds of good things. Oh, actually, this might be this might be able to power this. Now you're, you're noticing we only have the yellow and the brown grid left for the storages. Just stick ammo storage in there. May put a little bit of consideration what might be on the outside. If it's just not on the outside, just stick armories in there and call it a day. For the brown grid, we can get fancy. Because mana can uh, there's a, th a certain thing called mana canvas, which gives you power back, or gives you energy. And with the way the shield the ship is designed, you have um, two deep brown grid here, all around. So uh, what I like to do is everywhere that isn't exposed, directly exposed, you just put mana canvas. That's not looking too good on the energy. That should be fine. And for the rest of it, since we're not really going for speed, uh, just stick to tonic plating on it. Tonic plating is the best armor, basically. Not even basically. It simply is the best armor. It has the most resistance and it has the most health. It's also the heaviest. <laughs> That's the drawback. So, this would be this build essentially done. There's just a minor problem. We only have 130 energy regen. So when both our shields are recharging... Actually, even if just one of them is recharging, we are losing energy. That's not too big, too big of a problem. It will become a problem, though, if our point defense, for example, has to do sustained fire. Or, like, if we fire our weapons a lot, because each weapon has an ammo and an energy consumption when firing. And especially for our grenade beam projectors, which fire 10 times a second, as they are a beam weapon, that means they consume 180 energy per second. So, what I would advise in this situation is as long as you still want to run two shields, because the easiest solution to this would be just eliminate one shield, only have one, but I mean, you can fit two on this ship, it's, it's doable. So, what I'm gonna do is replace one drive with a shield. Actually, let me just... Look at the... the speed will drop by about seven kilometers an hour. But considering that you now oh can't find there we go. Have two shields and a very healthy of energy have a healthy amount of energy surplus. This is a lot more sustainable. And those are the basic considerations when Putting, when putting a ship together. You want to have a healthy amount of shield, a good amount of shields on a heavy frigate, preferably two, maybe even three. Depending on your build. 
but you also want to have at least the um the what the shields take additional when they recharge plus a bit. So for example in this case with the two shields I would recommend having a surp energy surplus of at least 500. That way you can afford your shields recharging and still have a surplus. I'm, I'm gonna save this. Now if I've mentioned shields. It is theoretically possible to sh stick a chi shield on almost everything. Yes, even on a gun belt. I think this is I think this will do. Oh, oh. Maybe this won't work. We'll see. Yeah, okay. <laughs> uh, where's... So maybe I should have pre-planned this a little better. Um... Yeah, okay, never mind then. Uh, <laughs> while the shield is there, um, we will not be able to tick all the boxes. So, uh, yeah, especially because you actually need, you need to achieve a speed. It, it should be, it should be, it need to be higher than 10 kilometers an hour, so you just can't, you have to have a drive. So, it's not, it's not possible to stick a shield on a gunboat. So that's like the basic considerations for making a ship. And the basic steps, at least how I find them the most sensible. First thing is always offensive capabilities. You want to hurt your enemy after all. Then the drives. And then power, uh, consider where your shields should go and power the whole thing. Protection and storage usually go last. Basically nothing else, not, not even basically, nothing other than storage can go into yellow grid. So that's just a given of you put armories there. Unless it's exposed, then I would put, recommend putting energy storage. Or armored, um, armored ammo rooms. But those don't have energy, uh, sorry, ammo regeneration. And then you just do the outside with, um, depending on how much you want to maneuver, Teutonic plating. And whatever on the brown grid isn't exposed, just gets mana canvas. Now, let's get into the unholy abomination that one sided builds are. <laughs> because for PvP, we're talking, we're strictly talking about PvP here. This is n none of this you should actually. I mean, with a basic step, but some of the advice just don't take them for single player. For PvP, specifically for 1v1, you can do one sided builds. And what do I mean by that? It's a bit, um, it's actually rather simple, it's already in the name. Instead of having weapons, and actual armor on both sides, you only have it on one side. So what a build like this could look like is uh, what you would do is once again, you stick your weapons on there. Uh, where are the but what we can do now is Put another steel turret up here and have it face into the left side. And then we can do one more of these up here and the serpentines. And now we can do all the drives. Once again, just combustion drives because they are just that good. 
hard drives for the outside. Uh, running is a nice. I'm gonna take stick the mana motors on here. One bot seven turning, so that's not too bad. And now, instead of putting the shields onto the command grid, we can just stick them pretty much anywhere we want. And we can even have them exposed. And I think my record for the ship is 10. I... First thing I'm going to do is put down these. All of those. And then the, the workshops. And now we can put some shields down. So how about two here, another two here. And that's as well now draw like about 800 power. And this way we are now four shields on the ship. And we can probably get away with six. Which I'm just gonna put right here. And we can get away with this. With using mana canvas. Because I'm also putting it on the uh, on the extra weapon side, because there's still the gaps from previous previously where we can just put stuff, and it doesn't necessarily matter. Because it's on the outside. And now we armor up the side that will actually get engaged, unless of course you mess up. But this side that is on the side that is supposed to get engaged. And on all the leftover space on the port side, uh, sorry, starboard side, we just put more mana canvas. Who would have thought? And with that much on mana canvas, we probably afford another two shields. Another one shield. <laughs> now we have seven. And still have a very healthy amount of energy regen. So where are my storages down there? And now just the whole thing of putting those back in. And I've now noticed that saying I will ramble for an hour might have been slightly over-exaggerated. I guess I could go through and make like a build for all the major ships, unless if you want to see that. Why have you fallen asleep already? I see you were busy. <laughs> no. Not doing anything. <laughs> so yeah, do you want me to make more, make some builds? Or? Uh -huh, I mean, I think I get the basics. Well, I think I'm gonna go through. Or at least good enough understanding. I think we're gonna do another. I think we're gonna do a cruiser, a battle cruiser, and a corvette. Mostly because okay. the the big ships. Mostly because I want to have some fun. <laughs> <laughs> and the others, of course, and the corvette because that will actually come up. <laughs> so we'll start with the one that's actually worth something. I'm just gonna put just this. And that is Corvette. Personally, I'm a very big fan of the Obsidian Lindworm Corvette, the turtle. Uh, but, um... I think I'm gonna do an Aether Hawk first. Because with an Aether Hawk, you can do funky things. The main thing that has been done already is you stick steel turrets on this side. Oh, well, Iron Cannon batteries, but I'm gonna put steel turrets there. An awful lot of cannons. You make a port sided or starboard sided, personal preference, build. And then you can stick a shield here. That's boring though. What I'm gonna do is make a forward facing ship with mana cannons. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, let's, let's up the DPS a little, shall we? 
because what you can also do is stack weapons. So what I'm uh, so I'm gonna do a little something like this, and then I can stick the shield here and make a forward facing. So yeah, once again, weapons drives. Mm. 98, or... Okay, faster. 6, 6 turning is sufficient. <laughs> then how to power the whole thing? Uh, easy, you just take a combustion drive on that. And I would suggest filling the rest with workshops, because of having 4... Actually, I'm gonna do this slightly different, like this. That way we have a little bit of, essentially, spaced armor in front of the combustion drive, and... Uh, the combustion drive is armor for the other two workshops, and with because one of the ways to lose is to lose all of your com is to lose all of your command structures. And if they're all clustered together, that's a very easy way to lose. Well, who would have thought? Eh. Uh. Okay. This is a mean one. Then um, the usual armor protection and the shield in the back. And then you can either do what I would definitely do is stick a little medium armory on the aft of the ship and fill this with armories. Um, of course, armories can explode. Yeah. But. When the enemy gets a shot on your Lars, you've probably messed up. So, it's fine to put it there, because it shouldn't get shot. I'm intentionally saying that like that, it shouldn't get shot. <laughs> it might. Uh, maybe will. And then the usual... Well, I canvas. But I guess what you could also do is um, have some side-facing weapons just in case. But, I mean, two cannons are not going to do a whole lot. So I just go for the additional energy region. And now we have a somewhat funky build, a forward-facing Aetherhawk. I didn't have yet. That's nice. Uh, wait. I forgot to color it. Sorry. <laughs> All my ship builds have to be green. It's just, uh, it's just the thing. Unless, of course, they're in VR, then they need to be blue. Because, first of all, what I'm about to say is absolutely a joke. Don't take it seriously. It doesn't work like that. Green makes your ship spin faster. Red makes your ship go faster, and blue makes your ship strafe faster, and reverse. And there's nothing more silly than a teleporting river Mara. <laughs> <laughs> Which had an I don't, had a uh, strafing speed of I don't know, probably Mach five. But for now, I want to show the... Uh, so, by the way, just basic uh, one thought for the uh, River Mara, what you can do on the River Mara, is you can have a shield, and you can have two uh, mana cannons facing to one side, and there the whole uh, having the range advantage comes in again. So, you just... You have a decently fast ship, you can, out, you can maneuver decently, so you can just stay at range and hammer your enemy. If they actually hit. Probably should show this. Because um, I just like that build too much. Well, okay, I'm just going to mention it. What you can do for an Obsidian Lindworm is make it forward-facing. And put a shield on it. It's really effective. I have a build like that. It's called the Doom Turtle. It's really good. <laughs> If you want to see it, you have to pay for me five, uh, five euros. Oh. 
Okay. Basically. But I guess technically speaking, if I sh if I were to go for just more DPS, I should put cannons here, but range. And as much fun as it would be to put a howitzer here, it would ca well if if the game would actually allow it, you could put it here, and I could fire. But if you can't put it here because there's just too much armor space in front here, so sadly, for the maximum forward facing power firepower, you have to go for stuff like this. Why did I actually put actually why did I put cannons here? I don't know, but I put cannons here. And now. How to reasonably fit a shield onto this ship. There isn't that much space where you can put it and you don't want to sacrifice all of your drive space. So you can either put it here. Or if you don't want to have it that exposed, you can put it here. Any other position than that is... Um, Non-advisable. Actually put it here. Then drives. Something like it won't be as fast, but it's good enough. And of course, generator, clonk, and some repair teams or some workshops, and the usual protection. And mana canvas for good measure. This ship's grid is weird. And this is essentially a Doom Turtle. Oh, fun build. Needs more railgun. No. Oh, sorry, I've, I've reached the fourth pages page of builds again. Fuck. Okay. Now I'm gonna do a cruiser because, of course, I'm gonna do that. And I guess it doesn't necessarily matter. I don't there? Oh, Zenok is watching. Hey, Zenok. Um, what I'm gonna do is. I want to do a BC, uh, sorry, I want to do a cruiser and I want to do a battle cruiser. Just to put um, what I've said into a bit of a greater scale and why I think that the steps I'm going through are good steps to follow. Because especially on the, gray, on the larger ships, you can easily lose track. So what I'm actually gonna do is I'm gonna make a poll. And I'm gonna ask, what cruiser should I build? Because there is three of them. Of course, there's only one that can actually fit a railgun, but that's not the point. Alpine Alicorn, the uh, cruiser, the Sparrowhawk, a cruiser, or the Leviathan. And I'm not gonna put the allow additional votes with fewer votes in because that would be cheating. <laughs> uh. So let's see. Well, I know which one I want to build, but that's not the question right now. Cast your votes. Well, I assume that's you. Yeah, I should cast my vote in this fashion. Can I delete specific message? Probably. Hmm? Probably. What in the f- Yay. Huh. I don't know. Maybe one of the moderators I don't have can take care of that. <laughs> and while the poll is running, gonna it's running with an awful lot of engagement. 
because currently only one person has actually cast the vote. I will pull myself another drink. Oh. I just noticed that for the entire stream so far, I forgot to turn system audio on. So, yeah, uh, you had, the stream had new music for the entire, like, no sound for the entire time, except my voice. But I guess that is the important bit, but... <laughs> okay, I guess I'll be building in the Vive then. And since this is Focus Fire 4 PvP, I'm gonna make a one-sided Levive then. Now, I'm actually kind of liking this choice, but only because ha ha ha, I'm biased. The Leviathan is one of the two airframes out of all 25. There's only two that can fit a railgun. Unless, of course, you have bugs, but let's not talk about bugs. We're living in the moment. Only two ships can fit them. So, since this ship actually has the space for it, <laughs> let's pluck a railgun in here. Right, the railgun is the largest weapon currently in the game. It's actually the only one marked as legendary. It has... I guess it, sh it should have the most potent. No, it actually doesn't. The Ironclad Heavy Turret is more. Well, okay. Railgun. What's so nice about it? It has the longest range of any weapon in the game, even longer than torpedoes. And it can actually hit. <laughs> Unlike torpedoes. So it says 650 range. It has absolutely no firing arc. Takes long to reload and takes a fuck ton of energy to actually put down and to fire. That's all fine, though, because, um, first of all, it deals 7,500 damage, which is the highest single-target damage, I think, the explosive torps. That is indeed the highest single projectile damage. But the big thing is the 8 AoE. So basically... As long as I'm not shooting the shields, if the weapon hits, you deal 7,500 damage to everything within that range. You can one-shot gunboats with this thing. That's what makes it so nice. So, let's get on with the show and get the rest of the weapons in place. Generally speaking, if you have these long slots, you want to put the long weapons there. So for these 1x3 slots, I'm just going to put cannons. And I'm actually thinking, but this is what this is an obvious choice. Mm. Kind of want to sacrifice. I want more point defense, but I don't want to sacrifice so much. I guess I'm just gonna put them here. So three of them should be efficient. And the rest uh, and the other ones, I'm just gonna put steel turrets. And all the small slots, I'm just gonna fill with cannons because cannons are fun. There we go. And of course, drives. And as I said, I'm going to be making a one-sided build, so I'm just going to leave that empty. And yeah, of course, who would have thought that on a ship designed by the TC, the TC drives, the combustion drives, almost fit almost perfectly. And all the leftover gaps, just grab those with uh, small mana drives. Now I'm gonna do power. See, like, how much 
surplus we can have readily available while maintaining a decent number of um, potential repair teams, which I'm now going to put in the workshops. So, with this now in place, we can start worrying about shields. I think in the hardcore one I did, I had 10 shields on this thing. Let's start with uh, four in decently protected positions. Okay, screw the decently. Uh, this is four. Let's do five, six. With my canvas, it should be fine. Well, I think seven are doable easily. So let's do seven. Which is absolute overkill. Just saying. Then just fill out the storage spaces, which to be fair are a little weird on this ship. Not gonna lie. Actually storage, that is actually storage. They're a little all over the place. Um you could, theoretically speaking, use those for uh, stuff like supply rooms if you were actually playing single player. This uh, is cargo, okay. And then just those four ones down there. Because the cruisers are intended to have decently long range. That's their whole spiel. And armor it up on the side that actually gets shot. Unless you mess up, of course. All of this whole one-sided... ...cannot be understated. That only works... ...when you actually get to engage on that side. When the energy... ...finds a way to your soft side. Because... ...to be fair... Th ...this starboard side is soft. You're screwed. Mana canvas is not armor. That's... That's just how that works, actually. You can fit another shield here. Maybe even two. Uh, no, two is cutting it. Two is cutting it close, I think. Yeah, no. I'll just one more. Take this shield and put it there. Looks a bit better. There you go. So this is a one-sided cruiser. And of course, it has to be green. Sadly, with the TC ships, the uh, areas that actually get painted are very limited. Now it's time for the... Now for the battle cruisers. Uh, shit, what's the <laughs> what the are the other two called? Uh, Venetian lioness and monarchy. Okay, so the Vien yes. monarchy or the Yamongander battle cruiser. Cast your votes if anybody actually cares. A Mars, you could participate. Which one do you want to see? Oh, a lion ran him on. Really want to see a lioness? Yeah, because I know you want the German Gunder, so I'm not going to vote for that one. You mean giving me the one that I wanted on the cruisers was enough? That was too much. That was an accident. 
Well, people, you still have a little bit of time left in there. Also, you know you've, you're doing subscribers poll, so only people with subscriptions can vote in this. Wait, what? It, it, it's not like a public poll, like for everyone. What the fuck? Eh? Okay. Well, I'm gonna I'm write it down. Money. Wait, are polls just, just for subscribers? Because I don't have a no, an I'm option. Just with you. Hmm? I'm just messing with you. Oh, for fucking... <laughs> well, I'm gonna build a monarch. Rude. You gotta abide by the poll. I ended the poll prematurely. Surely something is someone else would have voted for a monarch. Some monarch is just a little bit moth. So, Monarch! What's so special about this thing? It's a battlecruiser! It has a lot of weapon space! Like, a lot! So, what are we gonna do with it? Well, uh, I'm glad you asked, hypothetical viewer. Same as usual. But now, we can fit some of the more interesting weapons. Sadly, this ship cannot fit a railgun. Mine launchers. Hmm? Mines. <laughs> no, I'm not gonna do mines. Even though there, there are more mines, I've noticed. There's, uh... Oh, the heavy proximity mine launcher and the reaction guy mine launcher. That's a pure tactical mine launcher. And proximity mine launcher. Okay. Okay, um, so first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put down the Viridian, new Viridian rocket hives. 3 by 3 weapon, specifically designed for the new Viridian Republic. For some reason, uh, the battlecruisers of the other two factions can fit more of them <laughs> than the Venetian Lioness. I'm gonna make, no, I'm gonna, I'm gonna make this double-sided. Actually, let's actually make something that's somewhat more usable. Then, for all the 4x2 slots I have available to me, I will use the Ironclad Heavy Turret as it offers the most DPS and isn't torpedoes. And I've, usually I would just put two forward facing mana cannons on this. I think I'm not gonna do that. No, I'm, I'm not gonna do that. I'm gonna put actual weapon. And then, you can also put. Some mana cannons on this. Oh, good measure. Mana cannons, cannons, large cannons. Cannons for days. Oh, and also Howies. Ah. Well, I guess you don't really need the Howies. Let's go for DPS. Let's not fit. Let's not fit Howies. Let's go for cannons. And of course, steel turrets, wherever possible. Because on this ship, you don't actually need to worry about point defense space. Because, as you will notice in just a moment, just by virtue of placing down weapons, uh, you're already getting a, no a lot of point defense space. And for this here, I'm gonna do a little something like this. Yeah, point defense time. This is a BC, so one, two, three, four, five. Oh, let's do six. Let's let's better safe than sorry. And six clinic beam projectors should shut down everything, pretty much. And then the remaining spaces, I'll just gonna, I'm just gonna put cannons.
Except for the front, that's just gonna be armor. Okay. So, weapons. Done. And for drives. And for drives... Ah, okay, actually. By the way, um... You can move your camera in the ship builder by virtue of holding down your mouse wheel and dragging. The only problem is with the large ships, you can't actually get to um, the very bottom of the, you can't actually look at the very bottom of the ship. I think I'm gonna do it like this. And then put speed thrusters here. Just for the rest of small mana drives. Also, um, yes, the speed. Uh, sorry, the the mana motors would give me a bit more turning. Actually, I should go for more turning. It's 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 a little bit, but that little bit, it can help. And once again, even though this ship has space for the larger drive, I'm just going for combustion drives because they are the best. Or if you like do the maths and calculate all the thrusts down to the single tile, the combustion drives just give you more per tile than all the other drives. Okay, let's worry about powering this thing. This thing actually has an awful lot of green grit. So powering it shouldn't be that much of a problem. On the other hand, the thing is already drawing with uh, seven combustion draw uh, dyn dynamos already down. It is still drawing another 5k worth of energy. And we also still want to fit some shields. Hmm. Well, I guess if we want to be daring, we could put them exposed. Oh, well, let's just do that. Whatever went wrong with that. I'm just gonna stick them right here. Ta-da! Four shields. Actually. Make that five. Or six. Six sounds like a good idea, and then just some uh, workshops. That little bit of repair power and extra energy. I think what I'm gonna do is remove one of these guys and put workshops here. How many shields do we have? Six. Six. That way, we have absolutely enough energy regen. Well, we don't have all our commands stuck into the same place. They are a bit more spread out. So that way, when this um, when we lose this section of the ship, which already takes quite a bit of effort, we don't lose the entirety of our command structure. Of our commands. And then some big explosions to round it off. And the weapons serving as spaced armor. And if you really want to be a bit more careful with this, you can put... Um, energy storage behind the weapons and that way when that gets penetrated it doesn't explode as badly then of course lastly it's armor time or adventure time armor time teutonic plating all the way of course
and uh, yeah. But uh, should you do PC duels in the PvP tournaments? If you're picking anything, something in the battle cruiser size class or in the battle cruiser size that isn't a Yermungandr, you're stupid. That's just how it is. The Yermungandr is overpowered. <laughs> And I will die on that hill. Okay, I'm gonna regret the. Uh, actually, Mars. What? You get to name the ship. Okay, let me just look at the ship. These nuts. Ha! <laughs> <laughs> Got him. <laughs> no, sorry. Uh, let's see. Um, can't put me on off like that. Uh, let's see here. Um, hmm. Well, you, you might be able to understand that for obvious reasons. I didn't want to ask Renamon. <laughs> yeah, no. <laughs> All of you will reveal. No. I see that there's a lot of guns on it. Yes. Gunny. Gunny. Gunny the battle cruiser. Yes. Okay. And what color should it be? Red. Red. Danger red? Bright red? Yes. Little darker red or just bright? Uh, more like uh, rusted iron red. Hold on here. I don't know something, something like this. Could something be. like that. Yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, and as you can see. This takes an awful long time to finish. So, should you actually do BC duels in the tournament, don't look at your enemy's loadout. Just don't. It will freeze your game for a few for quite a few seconds. Maybe even like 10 seconds or so. So, just just don't, okay? <laughs> also, with, if there is BC duels, I will not show the loadouts off. Now, should I also go into piloting? Now nah, that can people figure out on their own. Just play the campaign. For piloting, my single piece of advice is play the main game, play the single player, and fight the bounties, especially the bounty at Fort Victory. Is that Fort Victory? Yeah, especially the bounty at Fort Victory. The merry-go-round, or the happy, happy Jorge, or happy jo Jorge, should, that should be. So yeah, uh, this concludes this whole thing, unless of course somebody wants to see me build or talk about another ship. Uh, I will give, again, another... I will give uh, the duration of... This song. Oh, I forgot to start snap. <laughs> there we go. Well, that song is running. You can cast, you can uh, ask in chat for another ship to be built. Maybe there is the hypothetical viewer in the chat that wants to see a specific ship building build. 
But considering that two-thirds of the actual existing viewers uh, <laughs> are already here... Just collect a few rods. Shame, shame, shame. Not actually engaging or anything, just just there to collect the channel points. Oh. At least you have my chat engagement. Well, I don't know if I like your chat engagement, no. <laughs> I prefer if you didn't. It's more fun for me that way. Yeah, but I think that the only option I have is to just completely throw you out of the chat. I'll give you a timeout. But I, I cannot... Uh... He is a subscriber, why would you time out? I don't know, because he's sending things into the chat that I might not want to see. There is no chat rules. Is there... Okay. Okay. I will fix that. I will find a way to break those rules without actually breaking the rules. Definitely. <laughs> actually, can I? Uh... Oh, I can't even edit it from the end. I just need to go into uh, uh, here. Well, I can officially say to you though that you have the most viewer count of Airship Kingdoms Adrift. Well, who would have thought? Now. Because I'm literally the person that created the category. <laughs> <laughs> like, the only reason that category exists is the two previous PvP tournaments. I don't think anybody else has streamed this game on Twitch. <laughs> but uh, I want. Congratulations on that! Well, thank you! There's no chat rules. Yes! Okay. Well then, I'm actually gonna call this a day and stop this stream right here. Just to probably s start streaming right afterwards when we play Pulsar. <laughs> Something? I don't know. Uh, but yeah, uh, thanks to the uh, three hypothesis. Uh, thanks to the viewers, uh, to you. Well, oh, God, I can't talk anymore. Uh, for watching, uh, I hope you find this interesting and conclusive somewhat. And see you again tomorrow evening or just in 10 minutes. We'll see. But most likely tomorrow because then I will be streaming and actually playing in the third official Airship's King Airship King's Rift PvP tournament 1v1 edition. But then. Wish you a very good day, night, evening, wherever you might be, and goodbye.